Do you want pastures without troublesome grass weeds? Well, you can. Spray topping is an effective tactic to reduce annual grass weeds, but its success is highly dependent on getting the correct timing of herbicide application. I'm going to show you how to optimise timing, plus a few other critical things to get right so we can improve our perennial grass and clover content and extend the productive life of a sown pasture. Spray topping uses a sublethal dose of herbicide to sterilise seed that is being formed. As a result, there is less seed available to germinate in the following year. Spray topping can achieve up to a 95% level of control of target weeds in the year after spraying. The herbicides most commonly used are glyphosate and paraquat. Spray topping is commonly used in spring before establishing a new pasture, as well as improving an existing pasture. However, it does have a downside. Spray topping will reduce short-term pasture growth by up to a third, so you need to be sure you can afford the loss in late season production. Spray topping is useful in annual grasses and some broadleaf plants that produce seeds with short seed life, such as barley grass, brome grass, annual ryegrass, silvergrass and cateweed. Seed set will also affect other annual and perennial plants in the year of spraying. However, previous seed set means the technique will be less effective in achieving long-term control. Successful spray topping relies on achieving even seed head emergence. Grazing heavily in winter and early spring, then spelling for two to three weeks allows seed heads to emerge at a similar time. Lax grazing will result in uneven seed head emergence, which makes the timing of herbicide application more challenging. Heavy grazing will also delay maturity, which means pastures stay vegetative for longer. Common annual weeds usually mature in the following sequence. Capeweed, barley grass, silver grass, brome grass, and then annual ryegrass. If multiple annual weeds that have different maturity times are present, manage for the weed causing the most concern. There are two herbicides registered for spray topping. They are used at different stages of seed maturity. Herbicides containing glyphosate are absorbed by the plant and move through the sap system. The herbicide is translocated to the seed as it is forming, which renders it sterile, even though it may still appear to have a seed head. Glyphosate can be used earlier in the season, even when the seed head may not have fully appeared. In contrast, paraquat is a contact grass herbicide, which means it must make physical contact with the seed to be effective. Therefore, it is used later in the season when all seed heads have emerged. It is also not effective on capeweed. Herbicide rates are provided on the label. Higher rates are recommended for denser infestations. While higher rates can increase the level of control, Use the minimum where possible to reduce the adverse effects on desirable species. Adding a wetter or surfactant to glyphosate will depend on the product formulation and the target weeds. Refer to the herbicide label for details. Remember, glyphosate is effective on annual broadleaf weeds as well as grasses, which means subclover seed set can also be affected. If concerned, use paracord instead. Flowering is the ideal time for treatment, but this period may only last for two weeks. In grasses, flowering is indicated by anthers appearing on the spikelet and in capeweed by the yellow anthers appearing on the black disc. The time for spraying glyphosate on barley, brome and silver grass is just before or at the milky dough stage. To pick this stage, you need to check the grass seed maturity. Extract seeds from the middle of the seed head and squeeze the seed between your thumbnail and finger. The seed should release a cloudy or white liquid. If the seed is past this stage, paracord is used. To check, a dough-like material should release from the seed when squeezed. The seed heads will also appear lighter green to light brown, giving that hanging off appearance. If the seed hardly compresses when squeezed and the colour is yellow-brown, it is too late to get control. There is no advantage in spraying before heading as the loss of pasture growth will be large and plants may produce late seed heads. 
Finally, the boom height may need to be raised compared to other spraying times to achieve double overlap at the height of the seed head. Competition from other desirable pasture species is an essential part of capturing the benefits from spray topping. But most importantly, apply grazing management techniques and other follow-up weed control methods in the following year to strengthen perennial grass growth. So check out MLA's Subclover Perennial Grass Management and Fodder Conservation Fact Sheets. A secondary effect of both herbicides is to freeze the energy and protein levels for about four to six weeks or until heavy rain. This means that growth stops, but the quality is retained even though it will appear brown. After this time, quality declines at a rate similar to non-sprayed pasture. So consider grazing other untreated pastures that are declining in quality first, and then returning to the spray top pastures later. Immediate heavy grazing after the stock withholding period has been met does have the advantage of enabling seed heads to be eaten before they become brittle. To recap, these are the things to get right to increase the effectiveness of spray topping and make sure your weed control is not short-lived. One, target weeds with short seed life. Two, aim for even seed head emergence. Three, use the correct herbicide at the right rate. Four, apply at the ideal time. And five, increase the desirable pasture competition. For more information, read the fact sheet, How Do I Spray Top to Reduce Annual Weeds in Pastures, available from the MLA website.